Hey guys, Doug with Right Way Options. You know, it's President's Day and it's brutally cold across the country. And I thought something I could do to be productive today and maybe help out a few folks is to talk about how I use orders. I use conditional orders and I thought, how about we just take some time? I could show you how to do that, how I use them, see if it makes sense to you and might be helpful. Um, so how about we settle in, buckle up, let's work on some orders. Okay, well, let's dig in here. You know, one of the reasons I wanted to do this video is um, it's it's one of the common questions that come up an awful lot in the trading room. And I thought, you know, I may as well record a video on this. And then if it ever comes up again, I can just point people to this video. So I hope you guys find this helpful. And um, I would really appreciate it if you do, if you click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. So how about we get to it? Let's take a look at a chart right now I'm, I'm taking a look at starbucks here and there's a specific reason i'm looking at it but um in looking at this chart in starbucks we have a nice little pattern potential setup where we could get a buy signal coming in here we've got a little bit of a hammer pattern trying to hold on to support nice little consolidating move and what we'd be looking for is we would be looking for that next buy signal for that opportunity to maybe have this stretch on up to the upside but I already have a position on this chart in my paper trade, and um, I'm going to show you that right now. Um, now, the reason I'm showing you, these are only one contract trades. I use this account to just kind of show people different things, different uses um, in Thinkorswim. And it's the only one on here that I haven't actually placed a, uh, an order on to uh, protect the position. So let's say we're looking at this chart and we want to have, we want to have a stop loss in this position. Now, for most folks, if you're just trading the stock, obviously you can just set a price, um, price stop and say, okay, underneath this tail, underneath this little support area, we're going to find a place for a stop loss. Now, one of the reasons I do that guys, and let me explain this just really quickly. Um, when I look at a chart and I see price support, okay, in that chart, I want to make sure, and I see, I see a point where the buyers actually stepped up and said, okay, the price is too low. We should go higher from here. When I see that, that tells me where price support is in that chart. And what I do is I always place my stop loss below that price support. And the reason for that is... I want to give the chart the opportunity if it's necessary, and we've all seen this pattern before, right? Where we may bounce around here a little bit more, we may have to test this level of price support again before we bounce off. We call those double bottoms, we call those W bottom patterns, but we see those all the time in the market. And when I'm looking at a chart like this, I wanna make sure that I give it the opportunity to bounce off of that support again. You know, one of the things when I work with folks across the United States trying to help out with their trading, if I run into someone that has a win-loss ratio where they're losing far too many trades to their winners, um, they're, the common problem um, with that is that they are setting their stop losses way too tightly. And they're doing that because they, they're trying to be prudent and conservative. And hey, I get that. I, no one wants to take a loss in a trade, and particularly a large loss. But what I would say to that is if you don't plan your trade around the technicals of the chart. What's the point of looking at the chart? What's the point of being a technical analyst if you're going to just set your stop loss wherever you want it? Price action tells us this information. If we just take a moment and set our stop losses correctly, we would get a lot fewer stop outs in the chart. Now, one of the arguments that comes up immediately on that is, okay, that's great, Doug, but I can't take that much risk in a trade. If this stock pops up here and shows me a buy signal and um, really, let me change.
change this out here um, really starts to show me something special in this chart a nice bullish candle I can't take that much risk from this entry to this stop loss and what I would tell you then is what you should be doing is looking for a different chart if you're not capable of handling the the risk to the stop loss you should be finding a different trade this one's not your trade so make sure you're making that uh, qualifying distinction if this risk between your entry and that exit is too great you should walk away from that trade okay and find a trade that fits you better as a matter of fact i would tell you you might be wasting your time looking at charts um, of that price if you can't afford them um, develop a list of charts that are really good quality charts that don't have as much risk now i say that and i say that with the idea of this being potentially an option trade remember if you're a stock only trader you can certainly trade this trade you can you can trade five shares you can trade 10 shares if you're a stock only trader that's really no problem um, um, you can just downsize the size of the trade the problem is with uh, an option position you're locked in the minimum share requirement is 100 shares and if that trade is just too big for you please uh, move on find another trade that fits you better now another question that pops up all the time is okay so I put this line here at 104.37 do I actually place my stop loss at 104.37 chances are no as a matter of fact I'm probably going to put it lower than that I'm probably going to put it at 104.35 or 104.30 I look at that number that makes some sense to me where I can and, and usually a, a round number I, I'm not going to pinch pennies here or anything like that do um, really odd orders but just something simple like that now with an option trade you can actually kind of get a guesstimate of what that risk would be um, on the entry of the trade by using what's called the theoretical price tool in thinkorswim and I'm going to show you that here in just a second but let's say we have a buy signal that does pop up in here okay and we look at that trade and and we see the opportunity that we may be entering this position somewhere around oh 105 um, let's just jump this up to 106 just to, you know to be fair um, the stock pops up just a little bit higher so we're gonna go to 106 and that's our entry into the trade and by the way guys this is what I will do when I see a pattern like this I will actually place a line across my chart and actually turn this into alert an alert I will set that as an alert because I can actually see this pattern potentially developing ahead of time and so I don't have to waste time running scans or doing anything weird actually what I do is I load it into um, the live trading alert scanner that's a whole different video but um, I load these charts into a scanner that's automatically running and, and then when the when the stock alerts I get this alert over here in my TC2000 and just says hey you might want to take a look at this chart and I can actually look ahead of time I can look at and find out whether the stock has good options I can look and find out if they're they're cost effective if there's enough open interest in there for me to even consider this chart well before the trade actually triggers okay and I can even do kind of a rough estimate of what that cost is going to be on the trade but let me show you the theoretical price model we're going to make this buy at 106 and we're let's put this stop loss at 104.35 just to use a round number um, in that in this uh, calculation so if I jump over here to thinkorswim and I'm going to go um, here to Starbucks Starbucks has this neat little tool it's called the theoretical price tool and what you're going to do is you're going to come up here to a, any column that you want and you have to put it on your options chain column and what you'll do is come over here click on a column and you're wanting to go down to the option theoreticals and Greeks you're going to come over here to the Theo price tool okay once you put that on the list notice it populates this 
this column here with some um, numbers and it's doing a calculation. Now we're going to manipulate that calculation by opening up the tool and if you look right here it's kind of deceptive when it pops into your toolbar it kind of disappears a little bit it's easy to miss. So right there's a the theoretical tool and all you got to do is click on it and open it up. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this and we're going to say we want to um, uh, buy this position. Okay, I want to buy this position in the trade. And let's say I'm using this, um, let's look over here. Yeah, let's say, just say we're using this 70 delta option for that trade. And we look in here and we look at the price. Um, I got to be honest, I don't really like that bid-ask spread very much. I'd want to negotiate that. But let's say we wanted to make a purchase of this trade. And we're thinking about um, this position here, and we're wanting to figure out what that price is going to be if the stock pulls back and trips our stop loss at 104.35. All I have to do is come over here. And um, current stock price, um, let's clear this, okay, 105.30. And if I change this to 104.35, so I'm going to go down a dollar, go down one dollar, and then lift it back up a nickel. Okay, 104.35. And what it tells me is right here on this option, if I were to pay $11.30 for this trade, that my potential stop loss is going to be somewhere around 1032. It's going to be somewhere in that range. Now remember, all I'm doing here is adjusting the price. I'm not adjusting the date, and you can do that as well. Or, and you can also adjust the volatility adjustment. For me, um, when I enter a trade, I'm I'm interested in that short term. So, what's it going to cost me if this if I'm wrong immediately on the trade, and I stop out? What's it going to cost me? And so, from here, I can look at this and tell you, okay, so I'm going to lose right at a hundred dollars on the trade, depending on how I get that entered, and um, no big, you know, that's acceptable. Um, in the risk on the trade. So now I want to move forward and set that position. So let's say we went ahead and we created that order and we bought the position in Starbucks. And you can see in this position, I'm in the January 2022 100 strikes. So I actually have a very long term position here on this chart. But that doesn't matter, right? I want a stop loss set that would trigger this option to sell right here, trigger this option to sell should it fall below 104.35. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my monitor tab really quickly and um, I'm just going to right click, say create a closing order, Starbucks, okay? And then the big trick on this is to to do use the conditional orders um, and this confuses a lot of folks I think if you hover over this order line right here and click so you can see right there that little gear icon shows up if you click on that gear icon it will bring up a window that's called order rules and under that order rules this is where we're going to set our condition and a lot of people miss this in these trades if you look right down here these are condition rules for the position okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click underneath symbol here and notice it auto populates Starbucks because I'm working with Starbucks here in that chart and I'm going to use the mark and the mark is the center between the bid and the ask um, on the trade and notice that I have this um, less than or equal to or you have the choice of greater than or equal to or a trail stop or just less than or just greater than Okay, so you can make that that choice where you want that to be. But remember, I want this as if it falls below or hits right in there at that 104.35, I want to close this option trade. So I'm going to say less than or equal to, and I'm going to set my price in here at 104.35. Okay, that would be my stop loss. Now, 
there's a change that you have to make here. And this is something that everyone gets a little heartburn about initially when they put a trade like this together, because we all want to demand the perfect price in a trade. And I get that. But when we are doing this as a conditional order, we have to be willing to accept the market price because, and here's my thinking on this guys, and you can completely disagree with me and that's okay. But for me, if the stock falls below that level, okay, if I have that stock falling below my support place, I really don't need to ask any questions. I don't want to negotiate with the market. I'm wrong on the direction. Get me out of the trade. Just get me out. And so at that point, I, I really don't care if it's triggered that and my perception of direction is wrong. I want to be out just as quickly as I can. So I'm not going to worry about negotiating or a limit price or anything like that. I'm just going to set it as the market. And I'm also going to change this to good till canceled. That way that order sets there and I don't have to think about it again until I'm ready to change that order. Now, if I click save here, it, it saves that information here on that trade. And if I hit confirm send, I want you to notice here what this is going to do. What it's telling me here is I am going to sell this contract, the January 22 100 strike contract. I am going to sell that contract as soon as this order condition is met. Starbucks mark is at or below 104.35. So in that circumstance, if the stock drifts down, the stock price itself drifts down, triggers below 104.35, this order will automatically be sent to the market as a market order and close the trade. I'm out. Um, and I don't have to think about it. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to make that decision twice. You know, one of the problems that people have with setting stop loss orders, they, they try to do this thing they call mental stops. Um, and, and I know this is true almost across the board. When that mental stop triggers, now you start second guessing yourself. Now you start talking to yourself, well, it'll bounce back. And we make lots of terrible mistakes and we end up seeing those uh, prices sink even lower. And, and we end up risking more than we actually felt comfortable in risking or losing more than we felt comfortable in losing. So you can see with this order, this order then locks that price in at 104.35 and I no longer have to worry about that trade. Okay, no longer have to be concerned about it. I, I can, my stop is in, I know what the risk in the trade is. I don't have to worry about it. And the great thing is guys, th is that I can adjust this at any time. I'm gonna go ahead and send this. And I know the market's closed, so nothing's happening here. But if I come over here, I now have a working order on that trade. And you can see right in here, I have that Starbucks order. And if I were to want to change that stop loss, let's say the stock moves in my direction, it starts moving up, all I have to do is come over here, right click, re cancel or replace the order, come right back over here to the gear icon, change my price. If I want to adjust the stop loss up, change my plot price, hit save, and then send and confirm. Um, confirm and send and my stop loss has been adjusted it's been locked into place so I don't have to worry about it I don't have to fret about that at all now by the way you can use these orders just the same way to set profit targets um, a profit target would be let's say you have a specific price a per specific percentage that you're trying to reach um, let's say you want to start taking profits on a trade at you know the, the stock is up or the option is up 20 percent and you want to take those profits well you can program that in to thinkorswim and it will automatically take care of those orders and if you make that order this is set up as a single order but if you were to set up this order as an oco order and duplicate this okay i, I can just right click and duplicate this order um, and then change this one to my profit target. Let's say my profit target um, is um, 110, okay? I'm just gonna come over here. Same thing stays here. 
Starbucks, but I'm going to go greater than or equal to 110. Okay. So now I have an order. I'm going to hit save. Now I have an order that is OCO together. Order cancels order. That means if my stop loss gets triggered, my profit target order automatically cancels. If my profit target order is triggered, my stop loss order automatically cancels. And I'll tell you guys, this can be very, very handy for you traders that are busy full time, you're still working, um, you know, get the day job going on. You can actually trade very, very effectively by setting orders like this and letting, um, letting the software manage. Now, here's another thing that you want to pay attention to, and I think this is one of the really good things about conditional orders, and that is we've all heard the horror stories that market makers hunt out stop losses, right? We, they're hunting stop losses in the market. They can see all of your orders. Well, one of the great things about the conditional order, guys, is that that conditional order does not go to the market immediately. This order sits on the thinkorswim server. It's waiting for the conditions to be hit. So it's waiting. The condition triggers, the, auto, the order automatically fires out for the market, closes the trade, and you're done and out of the position. So they can't see your order in the market. I think that's a great benefit to this kind of trading. When you OCO these together, you have a simple setup to take profits while you're not watching, a simple setup to take stops, um, why you're not watching and it doesn't require all of that stress that we sometimes put on ourselves watching that candle wiggle around and and watching those tickers on our screen wiggle around we waste all this time watching that stuff wiggle around when all we really have to do to remove all of that emotion and make it mechanical is set some conditional orders now there always is a bad side when you got a good side. And the bad side of this is that if you set these stops too tightly, so for example, you get a little bit too creative and set these stops too tightly, when the market is wacky like it is right now and we've got big wide bid ass spreads and different things and market makers are protecting themselves, oftentimes there's volatility first thing in the morning and those spreads widen out. If you set these too, too tightly, you can actually have that bid ass spread widen out because of a market maker change and trigger a stop when, you, when it was unintentional. So make sure guys, if you're going to use orders like this, you you want to use that price action in the chart and make sure you give it some room, give it some space, and then you don't have to worry about it too much. And I got to tell you guys, I, I, I don't get stopped out an awful lot in my trades. And the reason is, is because I'm following trend. I'm following support and resistance in the chart. Prices giving me clues as to where those buyers or sellers are coming into that trade, and I can manage around that position. If you have been struggling as a trader, particularly if you're working full time or can't watch the market throughout the day, and the stress of these trades is really getting to you, you may want to consider these conditional orders. So hopefully that was helpful to you guys. Kind of a short video here. Hopefully um, it made some sense to you. And if you want me to do more of this kind of content, just let me know. And also, guys, I did something new. I, I have a lot of folks that view my YouTube videos that are not members of of hit run candlesticks or right way options and they also have not subscribed to the channel and you know i get it um uh, not everyone wants to commit but if you would like to help support the channel i signed up for a thing that's very non-committal where you can actually support the channel by just buying me a coffee and i'm going to put a link in the description you'll see it in there just a link and you can make a choice if you want to buy the coffee if you got some good out of this and thought it was helpful that might be something for you to consider to support the channel. Everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic President's Day. We'll see you right back here for the market tomorrow morning. I wish you all of the best. Have a great afternoon.